Welcome to another week of our Connect Groups, everybody. We're looking at our series, Divine Direction. And isn't it great to know, the good news is that even though we plan our ways, God directs our steps. He directs and opens those doors that we need to take. Even though we've planned, He directs us. I've heard great discussions and testimonies from the discussions that everybody's had in Connect Groups. And I trust that you'll also have a powerful time tonight as you discuss. And remember, your discussions are going to be only as powerful as you are honest. So please be honest and uh, engage with those around you. It's lovely to hear your stories and your testimonies. This Sunday we looked at Acts chapter 20 and how Paul had a big decision that he needed to make. And we looked at four stages that he went through in order to come to the confidence that God wanted him to have. We looked at the Spirit's prompting, um, certain uncertainty that we might have, as well as predictable resistance and then an uncommon confidence. So we looked at these four stages that Paul went through in making a decision. I want to look at the first one and our first question, and that is the Spirit's prompting. In life, there are times where we feel the prompting of God to do something, that subtle nudge before we make a decision. And the Greek word is deo pneumo, which really speaks about us being wrapped in God, pulled into the direction that God wants us to go into. So it's a, a little nudge that he has that we need to respond to. So I want you to really be aware of the promptings that God brings in your life. This week I had a couple, had some phone calls that I needed to make, some encouragement to people. I could have easily not made those calls, but I chose to respond when God actually, I felt that prompting of God. It might be for you to reach out to somebody, to move somewhere, it might be to do something or start something new. I'm not sure what your promptings are, but I know that God is always wanting to speak to us. So our first question that I want us just to discuss is, can you remember a time where you felt the prompting of God to do something? And I want you just to discuss that because I know it's going to be encouraging to you to know that you hear God's voice, but also faith building for those around you to hear, to know that we can experience those nudges and leading from God and how they lead to something powerful. So the first question which I'd like you to discuss is, talk about a time that you were prompted by God or by the Spirit of God to do something. Okay, second question. Acts chapter 20, we read on Sunday. I want to read verse 22 and 23 to you now. Paul said, And now, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit has warned me that prison and hardships are facing me. So Paul didn't know what was going to happen. There was a level of uncertainty. What he did know is that there were hardships which were guaranteed. You might have a, a God's called you to something. You don't know all the details. You don't know how it's going to work out, all the steps that need to be in place. But you do know that there's going to be some resistance as you fulfill what God has got for you. But our goal in life is to be transformed into the image of Christ, not only to have a smooth ride and an easy journey, but the transformation of us into the likeness and image of Christ is so important. That's the most important thing for us. I want you to think now about a decision that you need to make. I'm almost certain that that decision needs to be done in faith. You're feeling God's prompting you, God's calling you to something. It might be to um, start something new, to do something new, to change a course. Maybe you want to move somewhere or you want to buy a house, not rent, or you want to change a job. You will need to make a decision like that in faith. Because the Bible says in Hebrews, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You're made up of your mind, your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. And you need all three of those to make a good decision. Your mind, you know God's will, you know that there's something which lines up, so you need to engage your mind, but you also need your will, your choice, you choosing to embrace what God has got for you. It's so important that you, that's why you need to make a decision. You need to choose to line yourself up with your heart in the decisions that God has got for you. Not just intellectually, but with your heart. So I want to just encourage you, it's important we make our decisions in faith because we don't know what's going to be happening ahead of us. 
If you are never a little uncertain about what's ahead, you're probably not living by faith. Because when we are by faith, we'll need to trust God. We haven't got it all worked out all the time. When you take a step of faith, you might expect or you can expect some spiritual resistance. It could be um, people around you don't understand or people are criticizing you. Or maybe there's some real spiritual opposition that's ahead of you. Or maybe they're just physical challenges that you are having to overcome all the time. We can expect some resistance. It doesn't mean if we experience resistance that we're out of God's will. In fact, it could mean that we're doing the very thing that God wants us to do. So my second question for us to discuss is if you would discuss what decision do you need to make right now that will require some significant faith. So what decision do you need to make now that will require some significant faith on your part. So you walking with wise people, you're seeking God, you need to make a decision by faith. What are those decisions? Okay, last question. I believe that God wants us confident in the work that we do, almost to have an uncommon confidence where people ask, why are you so confident? We know the ultimate purpose of our life and that gives us confidence. A lot of people don't always like the work that they're doing. So if you do like your work and your job where you go to every day, then thank God for that. A lot of people want to leave, they want to try something new, they want to go somewhere different. So if you find yourself in a job and at work where you love the environment, you it's a place where your passions are getting fulfilled, where you're your giftings are being utilized, you feel like you're really adding to what God is doing in that environment, then thank God for that. But I've got good news if you don't always feel like that. And that is, no matter your career, no matter your vocation, and where you spend the bulk of your time, you still have a calling upon your life. And that is to serve and glorify Jesus forever. And that is so important that we know that there's a calling upon each individual life. Paul actually said this um, in the next verse of that scripture. In verse 24, Paul goes on to say, However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race, complete the task that Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. So this is what Paul was saying. He says, if I preach, it's going to be about Jesus. If I get thrown into prison, I'm going to talk to the guy next to me about Jesus. If I come out of prison, I'm going to talk to the next person I see about Jesus. Because it's all about Jesus. Even as a church, we've just come out of a prayer and fast time. And some of that really stood out for me. I was just reminded again and prompted by the Holy Spirit that it's all about Jesus. Mark, whatever we do in this church, whatever groups, whatever preaching, whatever ministries, whatever conversations, let's make it all about Jesus. Jesus because he really is the center of what we do so you have a calling wherever you go what you do whoever you talk to let it be about Jesus and his kingdom so I want to encourage you in week one we said who you are is more important than what you do and why you do it is very very important so whether you find yourself at school at varsity or you're at home with three kids and nappies do your best and glorify Jesus with what you're busy doing. I want to just ask you this. If you had this uncommon confidence that you knew that God was with you, how would that impact or affect your daily tasks? So this is the question. With an uncommon confidence, how can you glorify God in your daily tasks better?